Okay, moving on to multi-headed attention, or the beast with many heads, as Jay calls it. I like that section title. The paper further refined the self-attention layer by adding a mechanism called multi-headed attention. This improves the performance of the attention layer in two ways. Number one, it expands the model's, expands the model's ability to focus on different positions. Yes, in the example above Z1, Z1 is the output of the self-attention mechanism, contains a little bit of every other encoding. So remember what we do is we, for a given input word, we score every word in the sentence, and then we uh, use those scores as weights for uh, taking a weighted sum of all the value vectors to produce the embedding, uh, or the Z vector rather, for <clears throat> that input word. So yes, Z1 is a linear combination of all of the value vectors for every word in the sentence. So it does include a little bit of every other word but it could be dominated by the actual word itself. Now, Jay said something uh, to this effect earlier. Um, yeah, he was saying that, you know, when, when computing the score, he said something like, obviously the score for the input word itself uh, is gonna be the highest score. And I still don't know why that, that should be the case. Um, so we're just gonna have to take his word for it uh, so it's sort of a problem, the actual word itself, dominated by the word itself. And I'll put a little question mark there because it's just sort of an open question for me. Uh, it would be useful if we're translating a sentence like, the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. We would want to know which word it refers to. So that sentence, uh, it sounds like he's just kind of describing the concept of attention again, but maybe what he's saying here is really that, um, because it's possible for the attention head to be over-focused on the input word, uh, having more heads improves the likelihood that the attention mechanism is going to look at other words in the sense. That's my best guess here. Uh, number two, point number two, though, makes more sense. So let's keep going here. It gives the attention layer multiple representation subspaces. As we'll see next, with multi-headed attention, we have not only one, but multiple sets of query key value weight matrices. The transformer uses eight attention heads. So we end up with eight sets for each encoder decoder. So eight sets of the query key value matrix. And each of these sets is randomly initialized. So they all start out different. Then after training, each set is used to project the input embeddings or vectors from lower encoders into a different representation subspace. Okay, so he's got a nice uh, illustration here to kind of make this more concrete. So up top, we've got our uh, word embeddings. So we've got, here's the word embedding for thinking, and here's the embedding for machines. And remember, the first step is to multiply the embedding vectors by these three matrices, these three projection matrices, the uh, query, key, and value matrices. And what we've done now is we've, we've added a little subscript here. So this is attention head number zero. So there's a little zero next to all the weights and then zero next to the matrices of uh, query key and value vectors. And then, you know, same over here for attention head number one. So we'll actually have eight of these attention heads. With multiple headed attention, we maintain separate query key value weight matrices for each head, resulting in different KQV matrices. So it sounded like he's saying the same thing there, but you know what he means is we have separate you know, WQ and WK and WV matrices for each head. 
and then yeah, resulting in these different query key value vector matrices. So as we did before, we multiply X, the embeddings by these projection matrices, and then that produces our uh, query key vector matrices. Great. If we do the same self-attention calculation we outlined above, just eight different times with different weight matrices, we end up with eight different Z matrices. So start with the embedding vectors, run through each of the eight attention heads, and we end up with eight of these Z matrices. This leaves us with a bit of a challenge. The feed forward layer is not expecting eight matrices. It's expecting a single matrix, a vector for each word. So we need to address that somehow. Okay, now here's, here's where we get to finally uh, make sense of the vector lengths in the query key value matrices. Okay, remember how we said that the, this, you know, for the transformer, the embeddings, both the, you know, the input word embeddings as well as the output embeddings from each of the encoders have a length of 512 features. But these query key value vectors only have a length of 64. And these projection matrices are 512 tall and 64 wide. And so they, they take the word embedding from being, you know, so if we take the word embedding for thinking, it's 512 features. We multiply it by the projection matrix for the query space. Then what we get is a length 64 vector instead of a length 512. And we have eight of these attention heads and Guess what? <laughs> Eight times 64 equals 512. This brings us back to an earlier paragraph that we kind of skipped over when we first read through it. So Jay pointed out that the vectors, the key query value vectors, are smaller in dimension than the embedding vector. So KQV have a dimensionality of 64, while the embedding and you know, the input and the output of the encoders have a dimensionality of 512. So he made a comment here that uh, you know, we couldn't really understand without first learning a little bit about multi-headed attention. So he says, they don't have to be smaller. We don't have to shrink it down to 64, but this is an architecture choice to make the computation of multi-headed attention, computation, mostly constant. So let me show you what he means by that, or at least what I think he means by that. Let's say we have our two embedding vectors. So this is thinking, so this is that matrix X, and the dimensions are 512. So we could just have a single attention head that is uh, 512 by 512. But instead, what we choose to do is we break, we break this matrix, this projection matrix for the query space into you know, eight different attention heads. I don't know if I actually managed to get eight in there, but, and you know, each one is 64 wide instead of 512. So we're doing essentially the same number of floating point operations, uh, whether we have one, one attention head or eight. Um, but, you know, the advantage is that we get, uh, eight different, you know, representation, representational spaces or context or, uh, whatever Jay described it as. Um, and it's, you know, it's mostly constant. Let's see, cause you can, you can do the 
projections. You can project the embeddings onto these weight matrices uh, all at once. You can just do this as one big matrix operation. So when you get down to the scoring, you, you have to break it up into eight separate parallel tasks. Um, and again, the, the amount of uh, floating point operations, I think, is the same um, as if you had just done one larger attention head. But uh, you've got eight, eight different tasks going now, so there's probably some you know, loss there of, of speed. Um, but the idea is you know, that it's, the performance is mostly unchanged relative to one attention head. So that's what I think he's trying to communicate there. Now, the final output of this whole attention mechanism is to create these Z vectors, one for each word in the sentence. So in our sentence, we have thinking, just have our two words. And a problem that we've created here with our multi-headed attention is that now instead of just one set of Z vectors, we have eight different sets, one for every head. So we need to do something to recombine those back into uh, a single set of Z vectors, one per word in the sentence. So it turns out that because these, um, because we used the, the size 64 um, in our query key value space, and we have eight heads, you can actually just concatenate all eight results, and you end up with one big uh, 2 by 512 matrix. And that gets us what we need. That's the dimension that we need to get back to is 512. Um, the model does include one more matrix here though. Um, and I think there's kind of a couple things here that, that this is about. So one is that, you know, if, if you were to, let's say, instead of using the size, the dimension 64, um, let's say you used 128, let's do that in a different color. So if these were actually 128, then uh, with eight heads, you know, this full thing would be 1,024, and it would be the wrong dimension. So what we need then is you know, another projection matrix that will allow us to get back down to 512 dimensions. So we have this WO matrix. Um, try to pull it over there. And, you know, if, yeah, so if we use size 128, then we would need this matrix to be, let's see, be a kind of a yeah, tall rectangle. It'd be 512 wide and 1,024 tall. Uh, so, so WO gets us down to 512. However, what's interesting is that, you know, for the transformer, because we chose 64 with eight heads, uh, WO is actually a square matrix. So I think uh, um, Jay's illustration is a little misleading here because really WO in the transformer is 512 by 512. Yeah. So because we have eight heads with you know 64 features each, uh, we don't technically need this output weight. Um, maybe though something else that it, that it could be doing here besides just you know projecting back to 512 is that it, it allows it allows the the network to learn how it wants to uh, recombine these eight attention results. So it's you know it's adding some more uh, expressive power to the model. But in any case, we concatenate the results for all of the attention heads, multiply them by this matrix W O for output, and then we get back to finally our uh, two by five twelve 
matrix that we send on to the next layer. So let's go back one last time to this kind of uh, higher level architecture view. So we've got one embedding for every word in the sentence, and these are length 512. And then each of these goes into the self-attention layer. We actually have eight attention heads with 64 features each. Uh, and so we, we run multi-headed attention, but then we recombine the results. And so the output of the self-attention mechanism is, again, just one vector per word in the sentence, again, with a length 512, not 64. So that's about it for multi-headed attention, but the last thing I want to cover here is uh, the difference in dimensions between uh, the original transformer that we're looking at here in Jay's post versus BERT, which is kind of, you know, what we're trying to learn more about. So for the transformer, we have eight heads, length 64, and that leads to length 512 embeddings, maybe. <laughs> All right, now for BERT, we actually have 12 heads, but also length 64. And so what that leads to is length 768 embeddings. So that's 12 times 64. And I think it's kind of satisfying to see uh, the alignment here between the illustrations that we've been looking at and the, uh, the parameters and their dimensions in the PyTorch code. So the next, uh, at the end of the multi-headed attention section in uh, Jay's post, he's got kind of this nice like summary picture of all the matrices involved. So we've got the query key and value projection matrices, and we've got one of these for each of the eight heads. If we look over here at all of the uh, parameter names in BERT, so we see the self-attention layer has a query matrix that's 768 by 768. So this is the uh, WQ matrix. And again, that's uh, it combines all 12 heads into one matrix. And then we have the key matrix, WK, and the valley matrix, WV. And there's bias terms as well, um, you know, that aren't included in the illustrations. And then those are used to create all of these Z vectors. And then the Z vectors get multiplied by this output matrix in order to produce the final recombined Z vectors from all 12 heads. So over here, that's represented by this kind of attention output layer. And here is our matrix WO. Puts the superscript there, oh. So again here, yeah, it's, we've got 12 heads, 64 each, so it's 768 by 768. And then there's also this layer normalization bit, uh, which we'll, we'll get to in the next video, I think. All right.